first of all, to uh, welcome, uh, to bring greetings, uh, Catherine Jeffers Shorey, who is the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. This is a huge church within the Anglican Communion, two million members. It is the most international of all the uh, provinces in the Anglican Communion. Uh, they, of course, have uh, their primary church being the United States, but then they have a, an, an Episcopal Church presence in many other parts of the world as well. Taiwan, Colombia, Ecuador, Haiti, Dominion Republic, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, the British Virgin Islands, and places throughout Europe. Catherine is a member of the Anglican Consultative Council and a member of the Standing Committee of the Primates uh, for the Anglican Communion. Catherine is, from the way I see it, the most traveled primate in the Anglican Communion. If I think I'm on the fly, she's on the fly 10 times more, given the size of the Episcopal Church and its reach around the world. She's an accomplished writer, as many of us know, and she has a passion for the Marx Emission, the Millennium Development Goals, and she's written extensively on matters relating to poverty, climate change, and the care for the earth. We are very privileged, Catherine, to have you with us. Please bring greetings. Thank you very much, and thank you for your acknowledgement of our Independence Day. Um, you received many of our clergy as a result of that war. <laughs> and I was informed on the way from the airport that the Rideau Canal was built to keep us south of the border. <laughs> I bring you greetings from the Domestic and Foreign Missionary Society. That is the formal name of the Episcopal Church and has been for almost 200 years. We began to send missionary bishops to the wilds of the middle of this continent in 1835, and nine years later, almost simultaneously, sent one to China and one to Turkey. As a result of that missionary spirit, we are present today in the many nations that Fred began to name, uh, 17 of them, including the United States. We are in covenant relationship with several parts of the Anglican Communion, Brazil, Central America, Liberia, Mexico, and the Philippines, which represent some of the fruit of that earlier mission engagement. In spite of the decidedly mixed and colonial motives that led to churches in all of those places, we continue in intentional fellowship and partnership for God's mission. We are working at being together for the healing of God's world. One of the great insights of late 19th century mission work involved remembering the impulses of the first mission work, the going that Professor Durising spoke of so eloquently last night, and the willingness to travel light. Roland Allen, Henry Venn, and others remembered how Paul himself went into new communities, gave the scriptures and the sacraments, and then got out of the way to let the gospel find root in new soil and adapt to the local context. Together for the love of the world does not mean identical forms and structures. It does mean honoring the gifts that God has already planted, that they might flourish in ways that can bless the world. The fullness of the gospel can only be known and lived in the diversity of the whole world. We need partners of all sorts, conditions, and cultures. The Episcopal Church continues to seek to be a real and authentic partner in all of its constituent parts and to seek deeper partnership with the ELCA, the Northern and Southern Provinces of the Moravian Church, the Old Catholic Churches of the Union of Utrecht, the Philippine Independent Church, the Mar Thoma Church, and the Church of Sweden. It's a long list, but it is an icon of our yearning to be partners in God's mission 
for the blessing and reconciliation of the whole world. The reality is that there are something like seven billion potential partners for God's mission in this world. It is indeed about relationship, all about relationship. Relationship beyond our own borders and self-understandings. We cannot know ourselves except in loving relationship with the whole world. And we cannot know God more fully until we move beyond our own self-centered focus. This gathering is a remarkable and hopeful witness for those of us on the other side of the border. The few Episcopalians here are certainly catching this week's excitement and possibility. We have a long way to grow in our relationship with the ELCA, and we give thanks for your example. Bishop Hansen, Archbishop Hiltz, Bishop Susan, and I have begun to meet together once a year to try to discover ways and strategies for working together. That is beginning to bear fruit. Together, our four churches have missional possibilities in many, many different places, and all it really takes is the will to develop them, to cross those borders and find new life in loving the world. I pray that this missional virus will keep spreading across the border and all sorts of borders. Let's start a missional epidemic. It can be a retrovirus and change our DNA. One example, two weeks ago, the Episcopal Church was blessed by the participation of Canadian Asian Anglicans who gathered together in San Francisco for the 40th anniversary of the Episcopal Asia America ministry. Canadians of Japanese descent in British Columbia have been important over the years to justice seeking in both nations in the aftermath of the World War II internments. This recent gathering raised hopes for the establishment of a Canadian Asian ministry collaborative, which could be a joint effort that draws in other partners as well. Mission is about going into the world together, at least two by two, to love, heal, and reconcile what is injured and broken. We are sent out of ourselves, out of our churches and worshiping communities to be broken open for the healing of the world. I've been told that a former bishop in New York used to dismiss people at the end of the worship service with these words, get up, get out, and get lost. <laughs> it is a gospel word of sending. Get up from the places of excessive comfort and stability and get out there into the world to find the lost. Let's get out of our own way and out of ourselves and get lost by losing our life in order to find it. So come Sunday, I would bid you to get up, get out, and lose yourself for the sake of the world.